Hi guys, welcome back to Biolog. Hope you're having a great day and a great week. Hope you all are staying safe during the quarantine season, especially now during the coronavirus outbreak. So today's topic is going to be about coordination and response. So we're going to talk about the nervous system in detail. So let's start off with the idea of coordination first. So what exactly is coordination? Coordination is the way all systems of the body work efficiently together to carry out a certain process. So take an example of doing strenuous exercise. Let's say you are doing strenuous exercise. Now when you're doing the strenuous exercise, your body is using up more and more energy. So because the energy is being used more, the body has to take in more oxygen. It has to take in more oxygen for the process of respiration so that it can use this oxygen to form some more energy in the form of adenosine triphosphate known as ATP. So in this case, because your lungs breathe uh, faster and deeper, more oxygen is taken into the lungs. The heart pumps faster to circulate this oxygen to the blood and uh, basically to the body cells and tissues. And the brain detects the concentration of CO2 and O2 in the blood and sends a electrical impulse to the diaphragm, intercostal muscles and heart. So let us discuss that. So once this is in the blood, okay. Now, once you have taken in the oxygen, the blood is oxygenated. It contains O2. This goes to the different cells of the body. All right. This goes to the different cells and tissues of the body now this allows the brain to detect a certain change this change is called a change in the surroundings or a change in the surroundings of the environment of an organism is called a stimulus It's called a stimulus. So rather when we say that, you know, for example, when we touch a hot object, our hand immediately moves away from the hot object. Why is that so? Because there is a change in the external temperature that causes a stimulus, allowing us to immediately react to the stimulus. Similarly here, the brain will detect a stimulus or a change in the surroundings as in the change in O2 and CO2 concentration and will then remove the CO2. Removes the CO2 and then basically it sends an impulse, sends an electrical impulse known as a nerve impulse to the diaphragm your muscles and to your heart. This allows for the coordination by nervous system. That's why we say that hence this is coordinating, which means that all of the systems of the body are working together. They're working together to efficiently carry out a certain process. Coordination occurs by the secretion of chemicals. So. The process of coordination is supported by the secretion of certain chemicals. These chemicals are known as hormones. These chemicals are known as hormones. So basically this is secreted by an endocrine gland. Remember hormones are secreted by the endocrine gland and where is the endocrine gland present? Do you guessed it in the endocrine system? So the endocrine gland secretes the hormones or the chemicals required for the coordination by nervous system. And this is present in the endocrine system or it is basically carried out by the endocrine system. Secretion of these hormones are carried out by the endocrine system, specifically the endocrine gland. Now moving on to the next part, which is nervous control in humans. So remember, we usually talk about a central nervous system right 
a central nervous system so a central nervous system is basically consisting of the brain number 1 and the spinal cord the brain and the spinal cord so electrical impulses also known as nerve impulses are sent along these tiny functional structures called the neurons neurons are known as the nerve cells they are basically the functional unit unit they are the functional unit of the nervous system which basically helps carry out all of the processes in the nervous system and they are basically known as nerve cells neurons are also known as nerve cells now glands and muscles so you have two parts first thing is your central nervous system consisting of the brain and spine second thing is your um no it's something called effectors the second thing is called effectors effectors are basically glands and muscles like the endocrine gland and certain muscles like bicep muscles for example so in this case this basically goes into action when they receive an electrical impulse from the central nervous system so when the central nervous system sends an impulse a nerve impulse or an electrical impulse to these effectors to the muscles it basically causes uh, the sort of action to be produced so nerve impulses are carried from the central nervous system when nerve impulses are passed on or are sent to the effectors from the central nervous system it is called a motor impulse this is known as a motor impulse so very important remember when the nerve impulse is sent from the central nervous system as in from the brain and the spine to an effector known as a gland or a muscle it is known as a motor impulse so a motor impulse is from the brain or spine to the effectors the second type of impulse is a sensory impulse now as you guessed it sensory impulse means it is related to the sense organs now when nerve impulses are passed from the sense organs so when it's passed from sense organs to the central nervous system as in the brain or the spine this is what we call as the sensory impulse all right so in this case when we have from sense organs to the brain or spine is known as a sensory impulse from the brain or spine to the effectors is known as a motor right motor impulse right this is known as a motor impulse when nerve impulses are sent to the effectors motor impulse when it is sent from the sense organ to the central nervous system it is a sensory impulse when nerves that connect the body to the central nervous system it forms a peripheral nervous system so there are certain nerves that connect nerves that connect the central nervous system to the peripheral sorry to the connect the central nervous system to the body as in the other cells or tissues this forms the peripheral nervous system
all right this forms the peripheral nervous system right so another thing is about the nerve cells itself the neurons motor neurons carry impulses from the central nervous system to the effectors sensory neurons carry impulses from the sense organs to the central nervous system relay neurons let's talk about relay neurons all right now relay neurons basically connect one neuron to another so relay neurons actually they connect one neuron to another or they basically carry the impulse rather so we can say that they connect neurons so you have one neuron here let's say now my diagram is not very accurate so excuse that right so let's say you have one neuron there and we have another neuron there so a relay neuron connects two neurons it's like a junction between two neurons because it connects both of the neurons so this is called a relay neuron why because it connects the two neuron this is neuron number 1 neuron number 2 all right so a relay neuron connects the two neurons now there are three main ideas in this case how exactly does it happen so in the nervous system all right in the nervous system you have three main ideas first thing is your sensory input first thing is your sensory input this then goes to something called integration this then goes to something called the motor output and then finally you get response so what this is is that firstly let's talk about sensory input so sensory input is uh, just the sort of input or rather it is the stimulus which is basically what a change in the surroundings of an organism integration on the other hand is when the nervous system processes what is happening and decides what should be done about it so integration is where the nervous system processes the information and also thinks about what should be done what should be done about it all right motor output motor output is a response that occurs when your nervous system activates a certain part of your body this is the response when there is an action potential or when basically a certain action needs to occur and when the system gets activated all right body system gets activated finally your response is finally what you do about the action finally your response to the stimulus is what is known as response right you have two parts to the nervous system main so the main two parts are the central nervous system and the peripheral nervous system as we spoke about it so the central nervous system as we know is the brain and spine and the peripheral nervous system is all of the nerves that branch off from the brain and spine and connect the central nervous system to the other body parts right so this is one of the mind maps that is very important for this topic mind maps I always recommend making these sort of mind maps wherever you go. So the first thing is nervous system, right?
Nervous system again contains two parts. You have the central nervous system and the peripheral and the peripheral nervous system. Now, under the peripheral nervous system, you have again two parts. You have the sensory division and the motor division. All right. Now, sensory division, we know it moves from the sense organs, from the sense organs to the central nervous system. This moves um, from the central nervous system or rather from the, yes, from the central nervous system to the effectors the brain, sorry, the muscles and the glands. Remember, effectors are muscles and glands. Then further on, you again have two things. Under motor division, you have two types. Again, you have the somatic voluntary And you have the autonomic, which we know as involuntary. Now, further on again, the autonomic is divided into two parts. First thing is that you have sympathetic and parasympathetic. Now, what do we mean by this? So, sympathetic and parasympathetic, right? So, sympathetic, actually, it's very ironic if you see. So, sympathetic, usually when you think about it, it should mean that, you know, you are having a lot of emotions and rather it, uh, you know, it's basically kind of like when you say that, you know, you feel sympathy for someone else or you feel bad for someone else. It's like that. You initially think of it like that, but what it actually is is that sympathetic responses make you feel scared out or freaked out about something so let's say you have a spider on your um, shirt so if you have a spider on your shirt you can either respond to it in two ways one is the parasympathetic way other is the sympathetic way sympathetic way will make you scared and get you freaked out about the spider on your shirt but a parasympathetic way will make your body relaxed. So the parasympathetic way relaxes the body. And sympathetic makes you scared and freaked out about the spider. All right. So this is the idea basics of the nervous system. So in this case, this is all you will need to learn about the basic idea of coordination and response. I hope you like the video. If you do, please like, share and subscribe to Biolog and I will see you in my next video. Stay safe and take care.